As dawn breaks over Birmingham, the city's Muslim community hear the first call to prayer. The scratchy sounds broadcast from the local mosque are relayed through special receivers installed in hundreds of Muslim homes. And here in Birchfield, Sonabur Sheikh and her daughter Mavish prepare to pray. I would say Islam is a way of life. And from there, begin to draw out what does life mean. You could begin to look at social aspects, you could begin to look at moral aspects, you could begin to look at spiritual aspects, and from there, begin to show what it actually means as a way of life. It's a way of life the primary teachers will need to be aware of. With the help of the Sheikh family, we'll explore the basic elements of Islamic faith. Mrs. Sheikh is a teaching assistant. Her husband, Mohammed Naeem, is a postal worker, and they have three children, Nisar, who's nine, Sufyan, who's five, and three-year-old Mavish. We'll be spending 48 hours with the family as they celebrate Eid al-Fitr, the festival that marks the end of Ramadan, and gaining an insight into their everyday life. Muslims, like the Sheikh family, are required to follow the five pillars of Islam. Shahada, a declaration of faith in Allah and his prophet Muhammad. Salah, prayer five times a day. Zakah, giving money to the poor. Hajj, making a pilgrimage to Mecca. And Saum, fasting during Ramadan. The annual holy month of Ramadan unites all Muslims in fasting, feasting, worship and prayer. How food is prepared, eaten and abstained from can provide a useful teaching focus. When we're fasting, we think about the poor people around the world who stay without food. And um, we keep our fast early in the morning before the sunrise and finish before the sunset. After the sunset, we able we can eat. We open our fast with dates and various other things, whatever you've got on the table. And then after that, we have a special prayer called Taravi. There are many benefits with regards to fasting. So it is a means of spiritual elevation. It gives them the consciousness of being aware all the time of somebody looking after them. It is a time for reflection, for meditation. It is also a time when children can begin to think about other less fortunate people across the world and how they can contribute towards the elevation of uh, poverty. It's as well to be aware that fasting for 30 days and having to work hard at school is a real challenge, especially for the children. There are many, many teachers who are sensitive to the needs of Muslim children, particularly during Ramadan, so they wouldn't do sternness activities during PE. They would do PE, but they would monitor that very carefully and not let the children get engaged in heavy activities or very demanding activities in PE. After 30 days of fasting comes Eid al-Fitr. It's a day for special clothes, family visiting and feasting. For the teacher, this festival offers the chance to explore the role of family and community. It's a day as well for remembering the dead and it's a day for community events, it's a day for forgiveness. The thing I like best is um, we get presents and money. For Eid meal we cook special milk which is called shirkurma where you have vermicelli and almonds and pistachio and things in there. We also make kebabs, samosas, chicken, rice, uh, bake a cake for Eid. Gift giving is an integral part of Eid and money is collected for the poor reflecting another of the five pillars, zakah. Zakah is a useful theme to link with other areas of the RE and PSHE curriculum. We send money to India because we're supposed to take a certain percentage out of your savings to help the poor in Ramadan. That's called zakat. So uh, because we don't have really needy people here, really poor people, we send money back home because we have got real poor people there. Zakat is a form of worship, which is required by God through the Holy Quran. And those who have a certain amount of wealth are required to give out 2.5% to a specific category of people. 
The Sheikh family, like all Muslims, sit down to their special feast to celebrate Eid. Remember, this is the first meal eaten at midday for over a month, so it's eagerly anticipated. And the wider community join in the festivities too. Here at Birchfield School, where Mrs. Sheikh works and her children are taught, they stage a special Eid meal so they can celebrate the festival with their friends and colleagues. For our Eid meal at school we have um, uh, rice, chicken and vegetables with pita bread as well. Our school is a multicultural school and every time there's a festival we celebrate it in school as well and um, by having a dinner and um, this um, Eid dinner is very special because um, we can celebrate Eid at home with our family and in school with our friends and teachers. It has to be halal because Muslims can't eat meat or chicken without, um, without it being halal. Halal not only refers to food, it can also have a wider meaning. Muslims will label things they oppose like tobacco, gambling and aggression as not halal. Well, Birchfield is a community school and we feel it's really important to give value to the beliefs and traditions of the local community. And it shows the children that we take them and their culture seriously as well as their faith seriously. It's a day of happiness. A dinner that you spend the day with your friends, teachers, staff. For E, it's important for me to know is to respect our elders and do as we are told. You need to share because um, sharing is one of the most um, important parts of Islam. Like many workplaces, this school has set aside a special area for Muslim prayer. We've got lots of other Muslim ladies in Birchfield School and we've also got a prayer room which we use so all the ladies, we go up together and we use the prayer rooms and we pray Zohar and Asar over there. Before prayer, Muslims are required to wash themselves, which we call wudu. First of all, you wash till your wrist starting from your right hand three times and then uh, rinse your mouth three times. And then you have you wash your nose three times. Wash your face three times. And um, we need to do massage, it's a special thing for your hair, your ears and your neck one time. And then uh, we wash your feet three times. It is symbolizing the fact that you have now left the dirt so that you can now become more pure because you are about to communicate with God. We start off with um, just putting your hands over there and then ladies, they fold their arms here, but as men, they put it lower down on their belly. And then you put your hands on your knees, that's called Ruku, and then you go down on the floor and that's called Sajda. Under Salah, one of the five pillars of Islam, Muslims are required to pray five times a day, at sunrise, noon, mid-afternoon, sunset and night. For children, the prayer times can be flexible. And when the prayer is coming to an end, you greet the angels on both your shoulders, so you turn right first and then left. During the week, there is a congregational, a communal prayer, which we call Jum'a, which is a Friday prayer. And Friday itself is very significant in the lives of Muslims. It is a very uh, a day of joy, a day of forgiveness. It's a day of uh, festivity as well in some places. And it shows uh, a day of communal uh, togetherness. The Sheikh family have yet to make a pilgrimage to Mecca, but it is one of the fundamental requirements of Islam called Hajj. Hajj is sometimes usefully included within a journey's project linked to stories as well as the RE curriculum. Hajj is one of the five pillars of Islam. And here is a requirement that every Muslim adult who has sufficient means to travel to make a pilgrimage to Mecca once in a lifetime 
is required to do so. And once Muslims get to Mecca, it is a demonstration of uh, servitude to God. They leave behind all the baggages of class, wealth, um, language, ethnic background. They leave everything behind and become um, a unified body. The day after Eid, things return to normal for the Sheikh family with the ritual call to prayer. Nisa and his father join the other men thronging to this mosque. The Quran is a, a communication between God, Allah and humankind. And this communication has been taking place since the creation of Adam. The Quran was revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the span of 23 years. During the time of Prophet Muhammad, the Quran was memorized by himself and his many companions. Hence, you will find many, many children across the world today, including England, who would memorize the entire Quran. Explaining how the Quran is taught will help convey the importance of this holy book. At the end of each day, the Sheikh children attend Quran school for an hour and a half tuition. We normally tell them at the age of uh, seven or five to come to learn about Quran. So like uh, the way they learn A, B, C, D in school, that when they come here they learn uh, the alphabet of Arabic. And once they know that, then they start learning more about the words and all that in Arabic. And once they start knowing that, it takes about about the age of from five to onwards till the age of uh, 12. They finish the whole Quran. So a child of uh, eight, nine can read the whole Quran as well. Just like the mosque, the Quran school is segregated, with the girls getting their tuition upstairs. What we believe is that segregation is very important in Islam. So they are taught individually, the girls alone and the boys separate. So has Imran any general advice about teaching Islam in primary schools? In terms of a practical suggestion, perhaps start off the, the lesson or the series of lessons by eliciting opinions of children about Islam and draw all those uh, information that the children have heard about Islam. There might be misconceptions, there might be confusions, there might be um, wrong information that they have received. Elicit all this from your classroom and then take that perhaps to the RE coordinator or perhaps to somebody that you can get in touch with or even the head teacher or advisors and begin to map out lessons from there. So begin with the agreed syllabus, then find out what, if anything, the children already know about Islam. You'll want to offer an insight into everyday Muslim life, just like the private and special moments of faith the Sheikh family have shared with us.